All right, I think it's time. I got a, it's really hot coffee. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's so good to see you. We are live here at the Liberty Studio, and I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got um, a camp letting out right at four. So there is a roar right outside my, my door here. So I'm just making sure that everything is working fine. I had technical difficulties last week. I don't know if you noticed, but like I did the live and then I took it off and I uploaded the recording because I found out in the live broadcast, you guys couldn't see my overhead. So I apologize for that. Fortunately, it recorded the overhead. I had to make some decisions though. And I lost this really cool like graphic where I can be on the screen in front of my PowerPoint, but that wasn't as important as making sure you could see the project because it was a really cool like plasticine clay dragon eye project and I wanted you to see it. So anyway, so that's that's how that worked in case you were wondering. Um, and now I think technically we are all good to go. It looks like things are fine. If for some reason audio isn't working or picture isn't working, give me a holler. Um, I'm gonna try to remember to keep going back and checking the live stream. Um, it's weird because it's on a delay. So to go to the live screen the stream while I'm talking is bizarro, but, but hopefully that'll work. Otherwise, I just like to see myself on the Zoom. Yeah. Well, welcome, you guys. It is week five of summer here in the in the Liberty Studio. I spent the first part of this week saying week four, even though it's not week four. I cannot believe that at next week, like, so we only have eight weeks of summer. So like after next week, all our July camps are over. And all we have are two August camps and then that's it. I don't know where summer went. So, I don't know if you feel that way too, but it is just like rolling along. So I've got some things to talk about um, just for anyone who wants to know what's going on in the studio in week five. We'll talk about what's been happening in camps this week, what's coming up that you can be a part of um, and a little housekeeping things and then an art project and I'll let you go. Just in case somebody doesn't know me, I will introduce myself. My name is Allison Jensen, and I am the owner of Orange Easel School of Art. We are a children's art studio located in the Kansas City Metro. We have two locations. One is here in Liberty, which is where I am. And one is just down the road, about 20 minutes at the Flatwoods. Um, we, we work very, very closely together. So, so I own both of them. Sarah is the GM out there. I kind of GM this location. The staff, like we all meet as a whole team every week, like we do the same curriculum, we do the same projects, we do, we share resources, we share supplies, we share staff, we share kids, everything. So um, so hopefully there's a lot of consistency between the two. I know people have their favorites. <laughs> this one's my favorite because it's close to my house, but um, but we, we have two lo different locations that do the exact same thing. So don't be confused by that. Um, I'm gonna talk to you guys about some highlights from our camps this week. Here's a couple pictures, I gotta, Re reorientate myself there <laughs> on the screen so you can see our adorable campers. Our camps run from nine in the morning till four in the afternoon and they go Monday through Thursday. So our kids are with us for 28 hours. Um, when you do one camp, you're with me for 28 hours or me, it's not really me, with my amazing staff for 28 hours. And we do um, different projects and stations and creative play and games and community building and all sorts of great creative energy going on in the studio this week. So these pictures are from this week. Um, the one over here on um, the left is actually from Fantasy Creature Camp at Platte Woods. And then the one here where the kids are hanging out under the fort is from Glitter Fest, which is, I'm in my Glitter Fest shirt today, you guys. Peace, love, and glitter is our motto for this, this, uh, this Glitter Fest year. This is our eighth year doing Glitter Fest. We're going we're gonna to talk more about Glitterfest, but I want to show you this project. So this one here is one from Glitterfest. It's these giant rainbow paintings, and um, they were probably my favorite project from Glitterfest this year, although the crowns the kids made were really cute today. Um, but I'm going to demo this one on a smaller scale for those of you at home who, you know, maybe you can't come to camp this year, and you're like, I've got to do something with this creative energy in my house. So this is a good one for home because you can use any supply you have. You don't even have to use paint. So I'm gonna demo that one for you. We'll do that when we're done with the kind of the housekeeping. Let's start first with our virtual studio. So um, we have a virtual studio we call the Creation Nation. And this is a group of families that, that like 
this is like the coolest art club around. And we teach online live for these for these families. And then we also offer the recordings as an on-demand class. So um, I'm gonna go through some of the live options that we have coming up. Um, my Creation Nation members get these on demand as well. But um, for those of you who are interested in just grabbing a class, we do offer the live classes on a kind of like a a la carte basis if you don't wanna do the membership. So I'm gonna talk through some of those. This one here, actually this picture is from my Monday morning story time class that I taught um, for the, the littles. This is, a, this is, we read little green peas and then we we painted this really funny like scene of little green alien men and it's funny and silly and a great way to start our mornings. Let's see some upcoming ones. So uh, next Monday, so like coming up, Miss Tori teaches a drawing class for kind of our older elementary to teen tween artists. This is a little bit more advanced. This is Leo Lyon. She's going to be teaching this one on Monday evening. Anybody wants to join? I believe she's using oil pastels for this one, but some of her classes have used chalk or used um, colored pencils. And if you come live and you've got a different supply, uh, that's the value of being live is um, we can we can walk you through it. So uh, she will also be teaching Wednesday. Her, her classes kind of like fall in the same week, but she's gonna teach a printmaking class. This is for the younger artists um, on Wednesday afternoon. This is cityscape printmaking and it does use paint. You do have to have paint for this one. Um, and if you go to our website, you can find these. They are, um, I think the best way to find them is either on the homepage, there's a banner that says online classes, or you can go all the way to the footer. There's a spot that says online classes. That's probably the easiest way to find it. When you click the class link, it's gonna tell you exactly what supplies you need. So I know the information isn't here, but um, it is on the website. Um, and then this is an adult class. Miss Bailey teaches once a month. She teaches a mixed media class um, on Friday nights. And so this coming, not like, two days from now, but nine days from now, um, Miss Bailey is teaching Stick It to the Door. Um, and it uses a lot of raw materials that you can go get from the yard, like these, these really great sticks. If you have a yard like mine, <laughs> there's never a shortage of sticks. And so it's to make this really cool wreath. Um, so that would be a fun one for my grownups who are just looking for something creative to do. Miss Bailey's class is great for that. All right, let's go through some Glitter Fest highlights. You ready? Here we go. So first off, we all got t-shirts because every year in Glitter Fest, we all get t-shirts. And so these are the Glitter Fest t-shirts. The backs are super cute. They say, hang on, I got it. This is not a swivel chair. They say Glitter Fest 2022. Um, Happy Times t-shirt in Liberty did the shirts for us this year because um, they have some really great, you can't really tell, but it's like a sparkly, shimmery, um, golden black print on the shirts. Um, so these are our kids in their matching glitter fest shirts on Tuesday. And then you can see handfuls, handfuls of glitter. There's lots of glitter body paint that happens pretty much every day. Every day they're like, Miss Ellison, put some glitter on. And I'm like, Miss Ellison has to run errands. I don't think so. <laughs> but they have like glitter hair, um, lots, lots of glitter at Glitter Fest. Um, uh, and then there's a project every day, of course. So these are the rainbow paintings. I'll have more pictures of that, but um, they all turned out great. And then and they're so big. This is from today's. This is, it's Wacky Wednesday at the studio. So the kids are all dressed real wacky, wearing costumes and different things. Um, and then uh, for their project, we did wire work because they made a crown. So you can see some of them have their, their colored safety goggles on because they're ready to work with some wire. Here we are getting our, our rainbows on. Um, and it worked for, we have a wide age range in all of our camps. And so any project that we do, we wanna make sure it works for a huge age range, as well as um, a very like wide skill set, right? <laughs> some of our kids take art classes and are, have a natural talent to art or, and some of them are very new to art. Um, and we want everyone to be successful at it. And this rainbow painting was one that everybody could be successful at and you could decide your own composition and your own color and your own everything. So. Um, it was just a perfect project for us. Here's some pictures of the crowns. And um, where do I need to be? Here, I need to be over here. So you can see she's holding one that isn't finished here in this top picture that the, has, just has the wire form. And working with wire and is a, it's a sculpture medium, right? But it's, it's so different than like clay or um, like, it's just different. So you gotta do a lot of like twisting and um, we have the pliers for them. And of course they wear safety goggles. Um, and then those those pieces of wire were wrapped with um, washi tape and glitter, of course. 
Um, but you can see she's got one in her hand. These girls here, they have theirs already on their, on their beautiful, beautiful heads. So, and then our Platwoods crew is doing fantasy creatures, which if you've been following along with us this summer, you know that um, Liberty already did fantasy creatures. We did that the first week of July. Um, so Platwoods has the pleasure of doing it this week. Um, here's their, their crew. And then they get to do Glitter Fest next week. So I have two weeks of Glitter Fest that I get to talk about. It's great. It's just great. Um, as we expected, based on Liberty's camp, one of the famous favorite projects for Fantasy Creatures Camp are these really great um, kind of cardboard creatures because it's so open-ended. Um, so here's a couple examples of the kids as they're working through this process. Like this is a 2D project that becomes 3D. So they have to figure out how to get their critter to stand. Um, and we're using that notching technique. So where you, you cut halfway up one and half, and then you slide them together and it makes a notch um, for two pieces to sit perpendicular to one another. Um, and that's what gets our creature to stand. It's just, just such, a, such a cool thing to teach um, when the light bulbs go on. Um, we do a little fighting gravity, but it's it's worth it. Um, so they were they were amazing. <laughs> um, you can see like up here on this table that it, like this is the type of project where it looks like the closet just exploded, and so we end up with everything out from feathers to pom poms to I mean just just everything ribbons, pipe cleaners, hot glue, stickers. It all just right out of the closet. Just the good ones, right? Um, and then today they got the black lights out. So uh, today was um, kind of a, a wild things theme. And so it's these nighttime creatures and um, they had the black lights out and then everything that glows. So neon temper paints, neon quick sticks, neon oil pastels, um, and some white UV reactive paint, which I ordered special for Amazon. And uh, yeah, hard to find. Anybody has a source for white, washable paint that glows i need you to tell me this is, i it's it's hard for me to find um this is the first time we found something and bought it and it works it doesn't glow as well as the colors so we're going to keep looking but hard to find you guys are ready to make smart together yeah i should show you some story time pictures too maybe i'll try to do that next next week because we do have story time classes every friday um, and those are super adorable before I switch to an overhead camera and cross my fingers and hope that like it works this time, uh, I wanna show you the supplies. And because my supplies is like, I have lots of them. Because I have so many, I'm gonna show you before I flip the camera down. So the first thing I have are quick sticks um, and nothing green will show up because I have a green screen. <laughs> but the other colors will, so that'll be all right. So these are quick sticks. The quick stick is a brand. So similar to you would say like Kleenex, right? Um, it, they're solid tempera sticks. And so they, they kind of look like, like lipstick. That's what they look like. I've got solid tempera sticks here. Um, I like those for this project because they dry so fast. And so they're ready for kind of a next layer very quickly. Um, I also have some uh, metallic permanent markers, metallic Sharpies. You could also use like a gold paint pen um they're not sharpies so speaking of like me calling these quick sticks these are actually quick sticks these are not actually sharpies they're metallic permanent markers um and then i have paints let me grab them they're they're down here on the floor and like i said you could use really anything for this so i've got i grabbed the paints right from the classroom so they're already like all prepped up kids they are they are glittery of course they are glittery paints um, and we have all the different colors. Here's the green. You can tell because it's clear. So I've got just tempera paints and I have a variety of different paint brushes and different widths. Um, and the last thing I have is glitter glue. Now all the glitter is optional. All the paint is optional. You can do all of this with markers if you wanted to. Um, I think the paints are gonna go a little bit faster because I mean, painting is always faster than drying, right? Um, I'm gonna take some paper towels out because my brushes are already in water and I don't want them soaking wet. I wanna be able to like dry them off and then use them. So I'm just gonna take some paper towels off my roll. These are my brushes right here. Um, when we did this with the kids, we just put 
color, like a brush in each jar. And the kids just like took the jar, took the brush, used it, put the brush back in and returned the jar to the community bin o paint. Um, so that way they didn't have to worry about like washing off their brushes and, and stuff like that. But um, like, I mean, obviously if it's just one person, you're, you're not gonna do that. Cause why would you get dirty all these brushes? You wouldn't. Let me grab my mouse here. We're gonna switch our camera view. I will disappear for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on this camera. Perfect. And we'll stop our screen share. Now with any luck, you guys are seeing my table down here. I'm gonna flip up my light a little bit because I always like it really, really bright when you guys are hanging out, watching me work. I'm also killing a little bit of time because I want to make sure that this is actually showing up on YouTube instead of just a, a black screen with my name on it. Hey, there it is. Okay. So I've got my, my paper down here. I've got my paper towels right here. And Let's start, I've got so many supplies like all over my table. I'm gonna start with the paints though, you guys, just because I feel like that's, um, that'll give it a little bit of time to dry. Cause I'm, I'd like to be able to do a couple layers. So let me grab my brushes out of their water and just get them ready to go. So one of these obviously is not clean because my water was clear when I got it out of the faucet and now it's blue. So one of these brushes is not clean. That's okay. So I've got a nice flat brush. Um, I don't normally paint with flat. So any of my, my watercolor peeps who are watching this, they're like, Allison's painting with what? I always paint with a round, but this is different. This isn't watercolors. So we're gonna grab some tempera paint. I'm gonna load my brush and I'm gonna make the beginnings of a few different rainbows. Now the instruction we gave the kids was that your rainbows start on one edge of the paper, obviously. And then they're going to end on an edge of the paper. Now they can end on the same edge or they can go all the way over and end on a different edge, but, but they do have to go kind of edge to edge. So you can see, I have to kind of dip into my paint a little bit. And I didn't tape my borders. For the kids, we taped the blue border, which is kind of nice because then like with blue tape, actually it's not a blue border, blue tape, when you take off your tape, you get a, a pretty white frame around your picture, which is kind of nice, but it also is nice because then you don't get paint all over your table. That's okay. So I'm gonna paint this all the way around. All right, so then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my, my stuff. Now I could keep painting on this rainbow, but I think it's a better method to get all my rainbows established before, um, I want that color. I want to do orange. I'm gonna get all my rainbows established before I start filling them in. I'm gonna paint one that goes from this corner, kind of around to this corner. Oh, you can see the glitter in this one. There we go. Wash my brush, dry my brush, right? Cause you got always gotta dry your brush. And now we'll go blue, put a blue one in here. And that one's just gonna, I'm just gonna do three. And we did this like super big, of course the kids could fit a lot more like rainbows in here, but I'm just gonna do three. And then I'm gonna work on kind of above and below each one of these rainbows to bring them together. So some of our kids, they like, they did one in each corner and then they worked them together. And then some of our kids kind of worked more haphazardly like I did, okay? All right, I'm gonna switch my brush because when I switch my brush, then I get, I get a different kind of width of a, of a stripe, yeah? So let's go to, let's go to yellow. 
And at this point, I'm going to try working just a little bit faster. Mostly for time for you guys. Come on in. Come on in. I am live on YouTube. You're okay. Okay. All right. We're painting rainbows, Miss Liz. Oh, I got to do that today or this week. I know. So I, I said it was one of my favorites. So I really wanted to do it. I know. Cool. <laughs> so I'm going to take this yellow and instead of going on the bottom of the blue, I'm going to go on top of the blue, which makes a really fun, like, look where that yellow and that blue come together. It kind of makes a green. It's cool. I'm not putting any of my paints back, you guys. They are <laughs> not very good at this. We told the kids, put the paints back when you're done. Miss Allison's over here with all the paints out of the bucket. All right, let's do purple. Now purple next to orange, right? That that does not, this is kind of a pinky purple, but right, because purple has blue in it. So purple next to orange could be kind of a brownish color if they mix up or if they layer on top of each other. There we go. Oops. Rinse that off. Let's switch our media. So remember I said I've got these quick sticks. Let's grab a quick stick. So here's my quick sticks. Pop them up here on the table. And I'm gonna grab a good one. I'm gonna grab a dark purple. Well, it's not really that dark. It kind of looks dark, but it wasn't. We'll go on top of this pink. I love that because it also has a little bit different texture to it. Kind of got a fuzzy edge. Get our quick sticks all the way around. What if I change? Let's go. These are like all the neons got put in this bin. Oops. That one did not get twisted down, just like a glue stick. That's what happens. go here. You think we should put an orange next to an orange next to a purple? Why not, right? There are no rules. Orange is my favorite. Let me go under here. More pinks, definitely. Let's put some pinks in here. You can see, can everybody tell what color I don't love? Um, there's no green. I'll put some green, don't worry. I have nothing against green. It just naturally is not a color I usually choose. So there's a pink. Here we go, here's a green. Where should the green go? It's gonna go on top of the purple. Now this one's gonna intersect this other rainbow up here which is good, that's what we want. We want them to start overlapping a little bit. So I'm just gonna kinda, it kinda runs into it and then it continues over here. I'm gonna do more greens cause I've got my green in my hand. So we'll put one right here that's green. Okay, and then maybe right under the blue. The thicker your brush is, or the fatter your kind of your whatever your utensil is, right? The faster this is gonna go. So if you're using teeny tiny little brushes, this is gonna it's gonna slow me down a little bit. Speaking of which, let's grab a small brush. So this is a small little round brush. And we'll grab some glittery yellow green. Let's make a little green stripe right here just for fun. And then I'm gonna grab, this is a glittery blue. Let's make a glittery blue stripe.
do another one. I'm going to turn my page just because it makes it easier to work on. Oops, I got like all my brushes in my way. Let's move them out. Now there are mediums that I showed you that I have not used yet, right? So I haven't used my metallic Sharpies and I haven't used my, um, I haven't used my glitter glue. So we did our glitter glue when we did it, we did it right on top of the other paint colors. So that's why I haven't touched it yet is because I was like, we're saving that for the, the ending. I switched back to a little bit bigger brush. I'm going to work on both sides. This one here is ended up being in rainbow order. It was not my intention, although the green and the blue are switched, I guess. But it was close. Get this one right over here. Yeah. How about down here? And this one. Oops. This is a great color. It's like a magenta or a fuchsia. Looks a lot lighter pink on camera than. Than it really is. All right, what color's next? Yellow. We haven't really done a lot of yellow. We should probably do some. Wash my brush. Yellow. Grab the brush. We've got it all cleaned off, especially with yellow. You got to make sure that you clean your brush really good. I'm going to put a big yellow stripe right up here. Now, when I run it against the blue, the blue could still be wet. So I want to be careful that if I pick up any blue, I, I wipe my brush off or I wash it off. Otherwise, you won't have a, a yellow stripe. You'll have a green stripe. Not, not terrible, but maybe not what you're going for. I feel like my yellow needs kind of a darker color. We're going to put more orange. I'm going to switch my brush to a medium sized brush. So that way my, my little rainbow stripes have some variety in them. Ooh, my brush is still wet. Wipe that off. So the paper I'm using is just a kind of a regular art paper. It's a little bit heavier duty than our drawing paper. It's what we use for most of our mixed media projects or for just kind of a general painting project. Especially with like um, temper paint, a lot of times this is the, the paper we use. I think the, uh, yeah, so the, the ones that the kids did in the studio for Glitter Fest, we used a a mixed media paper made by Canson. That's that's a little bit heavier than even this one. All right, I want to put more blues. Let's grab some blues. I have two different. I have a couple different blues around here. I'm gonna put a stripe of blue here. I'm gonna put my paints away. And maybe one on top of this one, which means another one goes on top of this one. Now, some of our kids, when they got into the small spaces, they they fill them instead with color, they fill them with pattern, or they made a new pattern. So they stopped following the rainbow pattern and filled it with like a, I don't know, like a like a collapsing pattern. So it just like up in this corner, they would go to do do like a square and then it's like concentric centric shape. So that's always an option. I'm going to continue with my rainbowy patterning. What we have going on here. I think I might grab my quick sticks and finish it up. So let me turn it back to this way. 
This is a, a blue quick stick. kind of a, a fatter stripe that should fill up most of this side. There's nothing up top here to fill in. And yellow and fill in this one right here. So that's fun. I'm gonna do that one over here too. All right, so I think we're just about done. Um, let me get the last couple ones here and then we're totally, totally gonna do some other layers. So you could be done with this. We had talked about it at the studio when we, when we brainstormed this project that like some of our artists might be done at this point. Like that was a lot of work, right? Um, and then some are gonna be interested in adding more. So you can add more with the paints. We added more with paints. You can add more with your quick sticks. You can add more with your, um, like if it's completely dry, you can do Sharpies on it. We did a lot of glitter glue. So these are our little glitter glue tubes. And then on, on the different rainbow stripes, we added pattern. So it could be a polka dot pattern. It could be a, a different stripe pattern. Um, it could be like a zigzag or a swirl. I'm gonna start here just by adding some gold. Whoops, that one, that one ended up being a dash because I didn't lift up, but that's okay. Put some gold polka dots here. Maybe I can, maybe I can like scrape away the middle part. Like, a little bit, a little bit. Now the paint paints, like where I painted tempera, we might not be able to go in right yet and, and you know, draw on top with the, with the metallic pens, but we can definitely paint on top. We could also definitely do our glitter glue on top. So we've gone through a lot of glitter glue in eight years of being in business. It's very rarely ever used as an adhesive. <laughs> it's usually used as a, as, a, as a detail, something dimensional and fun. Um, you can buy it in containers that looks like actual glue, right? But um, we've always found that the best ones like for the kids, especially for their hands and fingers and for detailed work um, are these little pens. So we buy, for this kind of project, we buy, we buy this in, in bulk. Um, you can also, we've also done it where we buy the, you know, the bigger ones and you know, the ones that look like just regular glue bottles. And then we put it on pallets and let the kids apply it with a paintbrush. Uh, you don't get quite the dimension out of it, but then at least they're not they're not frustrated with uh, being able to squeeze out the glue. Search of fun stuff. <laughs> Once you start putting glitter glue on, though, you gotta, you gotta be careful not to stick your hands in this. <laughs> Like, don't put your hand in it because it's a, it's a mess, right? Some of our kids did regular glue on their rainbows too, and then just sprinkled on like different glitters because I mean, it's glitter fest. So we have lots of glitters around here. They're, there is no shortage of glitter anywhere around here. Just 
couple different things here. Let's see, what other fun ones? We don't have a lot of green, so let's put some green. I also don't have a lot of dark, like, so I, I think I need some more like dark colors. There's a lot of my paint colors that I grabbed, kind of the brights, the neons. Um, nothing wrong with that, but what if we put a stripe just right down the middle? That's kind of fun. That's a dark green. All right, I'm almost done. I do want to do just a couple of the metallic Sharpies so you can see what those look like. Um, if I can find a spot that it's dry enough in. Uh, the glitter glue is great for patterning and detail, but you can get even more detailed with the, with the markers. So let's see how these work. That's like a silver, that's fun. Um, so this purple was a, was a quick stick. So it, I know is dry. So I could draw like a scalloped border. I just have to make sure I don't stick my hand in the glue. This one here, this is gold. We have different colors as well as the Oh, great. Oh, that's paint. We can't do that. We'll do it on this blue one right here. How's that? Do a little bit of gold on that, and then it transfers over here. That's the same one. Okay. So there's a, a really fast and easy rainbow piece of art. I should stop. <laughs> It's just so fun. Okay, let me go here and I'm gonna share my, my screen with you so that we can go back to our PowerPoint presentation. It's never a seamless transition like I think it's gonna be. Let's see, and I will get my camera back on so I can join you. I got too many things here. Here we are, that's, that's back to it. Stop that video and start this video. There I am, look at that. And all my paints and everything here on the table. Okay, so we are on the tail end of our video. Whoa, put that paint down. Um, I'm gonna carefully pick up my rainbow art here and just show it to you guys. <laughs> of course you can't see any of the green because of the green screen. I just think that's the coolest thing. Um, so if you try that out at home, I would love to see pictures. Uh, we will show you, I know the kids art is still here, by the way, all their rainbow art um, is still here because we were taking borders off today, but we will we'll hopefully get that for you guys, um, like with some pictures with the kids holding up. So you can really appreciate the scale of it. It also just looks awesome once you take off that blue tape border and it's got, you know, that crisp white border on the outside, so. Super fun. All right, let's do just a couple things and then I will let you guys go. I feel like, oh, I moved this. I'm like, why does that look funny? It's because there, okay, there. I was like, cause the green screen ended. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, coming up. So next week, like we said, is the last week of July camps. So Platwoods is doing Glitter Fest and Liberty gets to do underwater adventure. So um, all that great resin work that we saw last week that Platwoods got to do, Liberty gets to do next week. Um, so our artists will be coming to do all of that and the Platwoods artists will be wearing all their pink Glitter Fest shirts, okay? Um, I did have some people ask about Glitter Fest camps. And so I just wanna mention, we start enrolling for summer um, in March. So March 1st for Studio Club members and March 15th for everybody else. And Glitter Fest is always the first thing to sell up. Um, and it's sold up like in the first couple days. So just something to be aware of. Maybe mark your calendar next year if you're like, that sounds like fun. My kids would love Glitter Fest or they're finally older enough for Glitter Fest. Um, not all the camps you have to sign up right away, but Glitter Fest is one of, one of those that you do. So just a heads up for that. Um, our fall registration begins August 1st. And we talked in last week's video all about the different classes and the website, and the updates and, and everything that's coming up for fall. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to. There it is. Uh, everything that's coming up for fall. 
Uh, so if you need to go back to that video and reference it, you sure can. Otherwise, you, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, they are ready to go for registration. The links, um, I think, are being tested next week um, just to make sure that there aren't any glitches in it. And we like are for sure, for sure, for sure ready. But August 1st, 9 a.m. is when registration opens. It's also the same time that you can register for private lessons. So all of that will go live at the same time. Um, and then our classes actually start in August. So most of them, we will not start until after Labor Day. Like the majority, majority don't start until Tuesday after Labor Day. But those Monday classes, because there's only four Mondays in the month of September, and we also like to get you four classes, um, we go ahead and start in August, and then we take Labor Day off, and then you come back and join for week week three, two. Does that make sense? Yeah, everybody's got that, yeah. All right, so um, all the classes begin either August 29th or September 7th. Um, and when you register, it says that. So you don't have to like figure that out. When you go to register, it'll have your class calendar right there for you. Okay. Here we go. A um, couple different ways to stay connected with the studio. It's kind of a weird time uh, during the school year. It's not as crazy. But, um, but in the, during the summer, it is. So a couple things. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do our weekly updates every single week. Um, but right now they are all willy nilly, like it's on a Thursday, it's on a Wednesday, it's on a Tuesday. Uh, once we get into regular classes, we'll go back to being every single Monday at like pretty much the same time. So, um, but you can subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get this. You can also make your email preferences known. So we have um, on from our homepage of our website, you can set up um, what types of emails you like to get from us. I don't send emails very often, but when I do, those are the lists I pull from. And then um, you can let us know what type of projects you want to see in these videos. And so if there's a project you've seen and you're like, oh, I'd really like Allison to show that to us so I can do it at home with the kids. Um, just let me know with a comment below or a uh, message to one of our social media channels and, and I'll make that happen for you. Okay. All right. So, and I think that's it. So I've got like two more days of Glitterfest here in the studio. And then, and then we are, we got a whole week of it next week. And and then it feels like summer's pretty much over, but not yet, not yet. We still have two more weeks of camp after that. So I will chat with you guys next week and give you more updates on what's going on here at Orange Easel. If you need anything from me, you know where to find me. And until then, you know, take care and I will see you guys soon.